parliament, there was a campaign against me for proposing that MP shouldn't get vehicles. I have said, and I want to repeat here, the, because there are two things that NRM now uh, work so hard to achieve. First, they want to make everybody look like them. Because if you begin to look like them, you have no more authority to, to say they should get out of power. So they will work day and night to make sure they corrupt everybody. Even if they don't, at least they will choose you. Mm. Because we, there's nowhere we can run. We cannot run to IGG, we cannot run to God, we cannot run to General Museveni, we cannot run to Auditor General. We, so we may have to start campaigning. You can't run to God. For, for, for travel you ban. Yeah. Have you seen General Otapire so, going anywhere? So the last time I heard he was in Burundi. You, you want he loiters in Burundi, Rwanda, Kenya. You, have you seen him in Europe? You, you want to run to Paris, to, you want to run to London and run okay. to Washington? Yeah, some of these characters, we may have to just ensure they're arrested from wherever they show us because mm. it's too much. Why don't you conduct a citizen's arrest in, Kamp in Kampala or in Gulu? Pardon? Uh. <laughs> my, my friend. <laughs> so, <laughs> the other day, I saw Aji Moses Chibongo with the SEC members. They sat at Musa Court. He said, okay, we are now postponing the NRM roadmap. In the evening, Mr. Seven said, I'm launching it tomorrow. And Chibongo was the first to arrive to come and launch a, a program he had the previous night postponed. How, how did he succeed in blinding all of you? He didn't blind people. Let mm. me tell you. You are also blinded. Where aren't you there if it is blinding? I've been at the forefront of demonizing the party, blackmailing and insulting its leaders. But we don't mind that. You know, when a cat gives birth, there are real cats and then there are wild cats. The ones known as a miyayu. Kill babies who are below the age of five. So I advised him to vaccinate the baby against the six killer diseases. No immunization was done, and so the six and most probably seven killer diseases followed the youngest dominant opposition party in parliament. If our comrade does the right thing to disassociate with corruption, apologize to the people of Uganda and resign from that commission, then we shall be willing to come together, rehabilitate him. The reggae continued. I am the one who appointed him to the parliamentary commission. As the turmoil lingers on, analysts are divided, giving their two cents to the leaders whose ego has since morphed and baptized a new name, Irreconcilable Differences. This is going to be the, is the start process of its rupture. Now, with this kind of approach, it just confirms. But how irreconcilable are these? Is it an issue of accountability or sheer politics that is threatening to tear the Red House apart? This is The Front Line. A very good evening and welcome to this edition of The Frontline on NBS TV. My name is Charles Mwangu Champagi. Much of the chaos in opposition political parties, actually in political parties broadly, has been running for some time now. The question is, how do the parties walk out of this? Where does this leave them? With political parties, especially those represented in parliament, in so much turmoil internally, can they demand accountability? Can they hold government to account? Can they give direction? where the country is supposed to be moving. Those and other issues we'll be discussing on the front line tonight. And I have a big panel. Uh, let me start at the extreme end. Mr. George Musisi <coughs> is a lawyer and an activist. Very nice to have you, sir. Pleasure to be here once again. Uh, greetings to the viewers and happy to be here with uh, these colleagues. Ofono Opondo, Executive Director at the Uganda Media Center. Very nice to have you, sir, and the front liner. Samuel Odonga Oto, he says now he's a freelance, a uh, former member of parliament for Aru County. He says he doesn't belong to a political party at the moment. Very nice to have you. Nice uh, having you and uh, good evening, viewers. Senior citizen, Dr. Maria Kovurunga Matembe. Doesn't need more introduction. Very nice to have you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Good evening, viewers. And uh,
from Kira Municipality of Shadow Minister for Finance. Uh, he says we don't mention the political party now. <laughs> <laughs> you have said there is time on political parties, so why do you have to mention? <laughs> <laughs> and Odongo has told you that he's a freelancer. Mm. So, yeah, they, they, we so they're more freelancers. <laughs> more freelancers. We, we face the same situation. <laughs> <laughs> Ibrahim Semo Junganda, and this is the front line tonight. Uh, let me start with, uh, let me start at the extreme end with uh, George Musisi. Looking in from outside, I know you have represented many activists, especially in uh, the National Unity Platform, uh, facing different court challenges. N looking in from the outside, um, what does the chaos, the turmoil within these political parties mean, not just for now, but the direction they are able to give the country, and especially the question of holding uh, government accountable? A, a lot of the debate has been going on on some of uh, what activists have been do doing on online. But this internal turmoil within political parties, what does it mean and what can it do? I mean, how, how far can it take? Uh, of course, internal contradictions in any institutions is, would ordinarily be healthy, but uh, sometimes there are other factors which push the internal contradictions to, to, to boil over. And uh, some, in some cases, we have even seen some parties split up, like, uh, like the, the, I think, the, lastly, the FDC that we've had. Uh, when these internal contradictions arise, the question is what is the cause? We should remember that we still have very young institutions, even including political parties. We still have a hangover of uh, the individual merit system where people think that they cannot subject themselves sometimes to the institution, which is the party. And thirdly, sometimes the reasons why people coalesce, it's not the vision of the party or any, around any idea, but sometimes as a, 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 a transition vehicle to another stage. Mm. So you find that the glue that holds some of these people together is, 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 is limited. And in case of any contradiction, this person is always very keen to walk away. And of course, then the other issue that we can't r run away from, like we've seen from the FDC, is the external hand is the external hand that is always hovering all over these parties to fish. But before we blame the external hand, we have to look at the, the, the players themselves. Because uh, when I'm, I'm glad you raised the example of uh, what has been happening in FDC and the National Unity Platform. Yes. At the center of the turmoil within the Forum for Democratic Change mm. is the allegations that money exchanged money hands exchanged from hands. a certain source. Yes. Uh, at the center of the latest disagreements within the National Unity Platform, yes. you've just seen the comments from uh, the principal, yes. uh, Robert Senta Muchagulani, mm. and Commission of Parliament, mm. former leader of opposition, mm. it's also somehow anchors a, a bit on money. Mm. I, I, if that is the source, if, if that seems to be the point at which the political parties are, are getting split, mm. then how do they hold, one, internally, how do they hold each other accountable, Inter-party, how do they hold each other accountable? And then how do they extend that to the government, the party in power? Inter-party might be hard because, uh, of, uh, as you can see, th th it's very hard for parties to uh, treat themselves as peers because of the differences in standing on the political parties. Uh, for, big t for a very long time, we had FDC as the strongest opposition party. Mm. Now imagine need of Joseph Cabrera telling FDC that you, this is how we do things. They will certainly look. So inter but within the parties, there should be institutions, there should be the discipline to, 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 to whip the road, no matter who, who, where it, the, the, the bucket falls. Of course, in the case of FDC, uh, the people who were being accused, just like in UPC, the people who were being accused had the strongest helm of the party, and of course, the ones who were claiming innocence were aged out, like or Ibrahim Fias to associate himself with FDC, mm -hmm. because he was accusing the people at the helm now. That means that internally, even when they went through the, what the Constitution says, the Elders' Council, which later on was found to be, uh, as per the other party, compromised, the internal institutions couldn't hold the people accountable. And that is, well, that's what I said earlier, that sometimes people tend to be bigger than the party, that even either the people who are being accused or those who are accusing, that the internal institutions cannot whip whoever is, uh, and then they, 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 they go ahead. So that's why it's always very hard. And of, uh, of course, we're talking about very young parties, even those which are 20 years old are very young mm. for them to be tested. NRM has not been tested so much. The last time it had some bit of contradictions, we know that they always have that stronger whip that glues them online, that uh, they, 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 are, they, they gravitate around 
the fist. Mm. So it's always easier. But these ones where there is no fist, the others will always walk away. Oh, oh let me come to you. Uh, the party in power ideally should hold its government in check. DNRM hasn't uh, absolved itself of this uh, duty effectively. Uh, are you saying the NRM hasn't held itself? It, ha it hasn't held the go its government in, in, uh, in proper check. <laughs> the NRM would have disintegrated both the party and the government. The fact that NRM hasn't disintegrated <coughs> and the government hasn't disintegrated, it means there is a, a level of effective checking and balancing. You may not be happy with the different trends, but there is a, a check. <coughs> As we all know, for example, our constitution does not provide, for instance, mm. for the NRM sec, the NRM neck, like other in other jurisdiction, that for example, in order for the president to appoint a cabinet, there is no legal requirement uh, that should table this for approval mm. in the sake or neck, save for the leadership in the committees of parliament. That's the only area where uh, the party plays a hand. Uh, the rest, it is simply the president's will. Mm. And, and so in that uh, respect, therefore, I concur with my colleague that if you don't have political party inst institutional structure that is strong, that is tested, there is no way you expect them to put their feet and say, we have found this minister wanting, and therefore we command, we direct you to remove him or remove her, like it happens in South Africa, like it happens in, 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 in Tanzania. Now, in spite of the fact that uh, the NRM says CCM and ANC are fraternal parties, mm. you know we have visited, we have paid many visits to those countries, plus, those parties. Plus the communist part of yes. China. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, it seems we have not uh, learned very useful lesson on how to whip our government system. But <coughs> let me go to the real thing in my view. What brings people together to form a political party? There are different interests. And I will recast you to uh, the late Major General Pecos Kutesa's book, Why They Found Themselves in the Bush. He, he says there, in his view, there were five tendencies. There were people who were running from the law, who went to the bush and in the hope that they were dodging the law, and they hoped that maybe the old government would go and they come back. Then he said there were those who are just adventurists, young people, say, I want to test how the gun is. Then he said there were those who thought that when they go to the bush and come back, they will come back to things, into things. Mm -hmm. And you have seen people have come into things. They enter parliament and they get into things. <laughs> they came from the bush and they got into things. And then said there were those who were patriots, who were aggrieved by the governance, the way the country was managed. And in his view, those were few. But somehow they have managed to steer the revolution, the, the, the liberation war for five years. They have managed, in my view, to steer the country to a large extent for the last 48 years. Look Are they still in charge on the central axis? The jury is out there, but in my assessment, they are losing control. And mm. so when you see many of these things, I think it is, it is, it is a pointer that that crop of the patriots is losing control. Uh, is losing control of the NRM, is also losing the control of the state. Because otherwise, all these things happening. Wh how wh what, uh, what, what would you recommend? What needs to be done to regain that control? And, and what is the risk and to the country? Sh short of another revolution, short of another revolution, 
probably even uh, violent. I don't see that through the democracy we are building uh, of liberalism, where people tolerate wrong because the people who are committing wrongs are their relatives mm. or their, their friends. Mm. You have seen what we are going through today in parliament. Uh, you ask yourself, how come if NRM people are complicit because the leadership being accused is theirs, where is the opposition? Where is the, 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 the entire opposition? Do you see the opposition saying, no, uh, you are our leaders in the parliament, even if these accusations are not yet verified, we are asking you to come in the open and explain. Mm. And so they are allowing the leadership in parliament to keep silence in the hope that uh, as usual, we shall talk and talk. And it will pass. Uh, and, and it will pass. Or, or maybe they are so much lost in their own internal squabbles. I, I, I don't think so. The people who are lost in the internal squabbles, for example, in with this issue, is in NOP. How, where is the FDC, at least one faction of FDC, which is in control? The faction which is in Ajanam Kumbi is in control of the party. Uh, they, they are not much in a, so w w where are they? Mm -hmm. How about the official opposition, which is stable in parliament? At least the, there's no squabbles. Nobody is challenging the leadership of the leader of opposition in parliament. Nobody is challenging the leadership of the shadow cabinet. Yeah, at least not in the parliament. I, I, so I there should be no reason. I, I, I had just before we, we uh, as we we're opening the show, yes. uh, Dr. Matembeya was asking which opposition. Well, there are people who are opposed to this government in parliament and outside the parliament. Do you hear them raising pertinent issues? Because even if the allegations were false, you would expect a normal opposition in parliament. But and also, let me come to you. Yeah, to, 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 you, to, you, call, you. To call our leaders to come and, uh, and make good against these accusations. So, I, 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 I want to think that uh, people are being diverted by personal interests. Okay. And so, <coughs> that is impacting greatly on how political organization and indeed s other civic organizations are being run. Look at the churches. Look at the churches, whether the established ones, uh, the Catholics or the Protestant ones, look at the born again, because people there are motivated by personal interest, immediate personal interest, and therefore they are unable to hold a priest to account. They are unable to hold a headmaster, we are unable to, to hold a chairman of a PT of a school the, to the, account. The, the House of Bishops just announced yesterday a new bishop for Luero Diocese. And that emerged because uh, the people of Luero protested against the one who had been uh, elected to take over that. And they said, yes. th they said it wouldn't happen. They also announced um, a new bishop for North Ancola Diocese uh, also yesterday. The House of Bishops was announcing those yesterday because it appears like uh, Christians are able somehow, especially for traditional churches, to raise their voice on, on some of these critical issues. But let me come no, to no, Don Gaudo. I, I, I participated yes. in the issues of the current bishop of uh, Bukit Diocese, mm. Egesa. I'm not a very active member of that church, mm. <laughs> but when they had the elected, the House of Bishops had the elected somebody, they were considering somebody there, and then a Christian in Bukit tipped me and the tango those. And when we raised it, although we are not active members of the church, when mm. we raised it, the House of Bishops went quickly. They said those two are going to roll us in mud. And uh, they dumped the person they had picked and then had to mess so, with So in Bukedi, in Luero, in, <laughs> uh, in other places? So, so it was not the church members actually who, the church members feared to raise the matter. What, 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 what is the risk you are uh, executing a political mission, not a, 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 a no, religious not, mission? It's not political, but I sided with the cause of the Christians <laughs> who were fearful. Odongoto, as a young man uh, <laughs> just out of university, you joined a political party that sent you to parliament. There was a history of political parties. Now you describe yourself as freelance. You're not allied to any political party. You're not in parliament. You've been speaking. Um, you, you, you're watching the chaos, and you've been commenting about the chaos in the different political parties. Part of it pushed you out of your own political party. It hasn't allowed you to join another political party. 
what does this mean for the country and uh, the future of political parties or pluralism? Yeah, thank you uh, so much. I'm very glad to be here I, to meet my good friend Semudi. And uh, to, to get to the question, Samuji I. No, me and Semudi, we are in a different league. <laughs> if, if, if we were two in parliament, the institution would be different, but <laughs> this is really? my senior. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, most of my friends are to the left. But uh, to answer your question, I wrote a thesis uh, when I was being awarded a master's in political philosophy. And my thinking is that liberal democracy is not tenable in Africa. This liberal democracy where one person, one vote, universal adult suffrage, and I managed to prove it. So we are in a stage of evolution politically that may take us another 400 years. And we may never attain liberal democracy because we are, we are modifying it. We are not we are not making it work the way it is designed to work. And uh, for liberal democracy to survive, there has to be well-defined classes in that society. <coughs> there has to be class struggles, and class struggles develop ideologies. You see, like in the US, there are those who want gun control, and then there is another group that wants freedom to, to access guns, so they form ideologies. Now, if we come to the political scenario in Uganda, you ask myself, ourselves, why are you in opposition? Why are you in government? W why is Ufondo Pono in government? Why is Semuji in opposition? So you'll find that the factors that cluster us together as political parties are various. Now, in relation to the Ugandan scenario, I think the first area I cry foul is what I would call the commoditization of democracy, mm -hmm. where you have to give groceries, soap, sugar, salt, to be elected. And then the second one is where you either have to belong to the ruling party to make it very easily to the national parliament, or you be in areas that are predominantly opposition to also make it to the national parliament. So the future of uh, pluralism and multipartism in the Ugandan context. First, from the NRM side, I am very disappointed. I'm very disappointed that the NRM does not have the capacity to fight corruption. This is my biggest disappointment. <laughs> they don't have capacity. I used to think that a general is a general. But I've seen a situation in the last parliament where the president proposed a salary and remuneration board. And the parliament rejected and he walked away. So we need, we need an iron hand that can ensure that certain things can pass through parliament. M many people would we, be surprised that yeah. you're surprised. Pardon? The many people would be surprised that you say you're surprised. No, b because now... I we mean, with your experience in parliament for the many terms that you served, and uh, you, you walked out, out of parliament not very long ago, uh, why would you su be surprised today? Is this emerging just as something new? You, you see, the moment the democracy evolves out of a struggle, an armed struggle, the first technique of any gorilla on this planet, like Jerobo Seven, is to attract enemies. They will always do, they will make every effort to attract the opposition. Actually, the opposition is President Museveni's dream as of now. Those who are in the movement, as long as you are loyal, you are kept there. So now, when we have a revolution that came out of a gun and has turned into democracy, uh, uh, running the country, then the first question would be loyalty. I have seen, Charles, mm. people doing wrong things and putting on yellow shirts. People stealing state money and putting on a, a, a shirt with the president's poster. And they are not touched. So yes. this, this hurts to the marrow. This hurts to the marrow. Now, for a young party like Noop, like uh, FDC, about 15 years, where I was there for 15 years, the challenge is also still the same approach of a gorilla trying to reach out to the political parties and ensure that even inside NUP, they have some NRM loyalties. Even inside FDC, they have some NRM loyalties. So even the problems inside the opposition parties are being caused by the party in power, by the gorilla approach of attracting enemies. 
So we are going to see continually weakened institutions and the institutions, the, the checks totally don't work. For example, Semuji would agree with me, the Auditor General is an officer of Parliament. So who is to audit Parliament? The IGG expects money from Parliament. Who is to audit Parliament? So we have a situation where some institutions are very powerful. Some individuals are more powerful than the institution. And you cannot touch them. You, you, you wrote a thesis, uh, which you, we, we did, you and I did discuss your thesis on the other show that I host, which is NBS Teso. And you're raising it again. Can we continue reading from the Book of Lamentations? What, is, what new ideas, for example, are you generating that the political parties being formed today could have learned from to work differently? Yeah, you see, that is why they say in, in, in the African context, we have what they call consensus democracy. Why would you waste time for people to go on a ballot paper to secretly vote for Semuju, and yet the previous night they were marching and telling people publicly that they will vote for Semuju? It means the system is perverted. So we need to actually, for minds that are not very close, I would even say a country like Uganda, we probably need to get back to the individual merit system. Mm. Because the institutions, they are individuals who are more powerful than the institution. For example, no one in the NRM can bring President Museveni to order. No one, not even Ufondo Fondo. The same scenario we are having, I, it's very difficult to bring uh, Bobby Wine to order. The same scenario we are having in FDC. The other day I was attending the burial of Cecilia Ogwal, rest in peace, in Oyama, and I asked Amoriat, uh, where is Besige? Are we expecting him here? And he told me what I cannot say on TV. Mm. So we have political parties that are centered around individuals. And so the institutions are also being centered around individuals. And the individuals are very powerful. And I can challenge uh, my, my friend of Pondo Pondo over coffee. Where we are now, where we are now, no one has the capacity to check parliament. Not even the president. The president does not even have capacity to check parliament. So we have a situation as a country that we don't know what to do with. As I was driving here, I was thinking that probably when I go back to Europe, I'll start a campaign for travel ban. And we have some of these people arrested, like the minister of Guinea. Mm. You land anywhere in Europe, handcuffed. Because we, there's nowhere we can run. We cannot run to IGG, we cannot run to God, we cannot run to General Museveni, we cannot run to Auditor General. We d so we may have to start campaigning you can't run to God. For, for, for travel ban. Yeah. Have you seen General Otafire so, going anywhere? So the last time I heard he was in Burundi. You, you want he loiters run? in Burundi, Rwanda, Kenya. You, have you seen him in Europe? You, you want to run to Paris, to, you want to run to London and run okay. to Washington? Yeah, some of these characters, we may have to just ensure they're arrested from wherever they show us because mm. it's too much. Why don't you conduct a citizen's arrest in, Kamp in Kampala or in Gulu? Pardon? Uh. <laughs> my, my friend. So, <laughs> so <laughs> let, let me get some more to this. So <laughs> let them be aware. One of these days, you'll hear some of them have been picked from wherever they are. This one I can talk with authorities. Uh, you, you describe yourself as a man in transition. Uh, you don't want to be tied to a particular political formation at the moment. Um, this, this case within political parties, you sit in parliament. There are many questions. Sometimes it actually sounds like, uh, it, it sounds almost funny that a committee of parliament with what has been going on over the last week would even be summoning somebody to interrogate them over allegations of corruption, over allegations of uh, bad governance or, or uh, poor accountability. But this is em em emanating from the political parties where you guys are coming from. You can't, you, you, you're embroiled in your own internal turmoil that you can't uh, stand up in parliament and uh, ask. We are where we are because someone has been working so hard to make sure we go there. Let me start with the parliament. Pono Pono is disappointed that the opposition is doing nothing. And he has every reason to do so. The current administrators in the parliament, when you compare to Wapakabulo and others, were they the best that uh, you wanted to serve the country with? Didn't you work so hard to ensure that they win? I, I contested for parliament, I mean to be a speaker of parliament. Did you ever support me upon upon? 
Because you see, you keep blaming members of parliament um, and, and especially the opposition for crimes that you have yourself committed. Just, I mean, how did we end up here? Did we just fall from heaven? In the military, in the police, everywhere, in the judiciary? Because you are blaming parliament. See what is happening in the judiciary. Each time I have a case before judges, I don't know whether I should even go and attend the court. The other day we were in massacre for Honorable Segrinias and Honorable Alani's bail application. The judge, the one who first granted them bail, said, on their own, even on their own accord, I can grant them bail. The second judge said, these are very influential people, they can uh, interfere with the investigation. When Museveni said they can get out, the same court now said now they can get out. They had been denied bail because they would interfere with investigation. When Museveni was done with them, now the, the court forgot that they can interfere with investigation. So you have overrun the court. You have overrun the parliament. And now you cry as if you are a victim. These things you've done deliberately, that you kill institutions, you've killed the court, you've killed the political parties, you've killed the parliament. Fonopondo, you should be the last person to say anything. You should be the last person. Because these things you have systematically done them. Your own party can't sit. The other day I saw Haji Moses Chigongo with the second members. They sat at Musa court. He said, okay, we are now postponing the NRM roadmap. In the evening, Museven said, I'm launching it tomorrow. And Chigongo was the first to arrive to come and launch a, a program he had the previous night postponed. Now they went to state house, they said, okay, now we we'll resolve, we will always be sitting here. What, what did that mean? No more meetings at Musa court. You can't see this thing is mine. Who told you even to convene a meeting? So where we are, you, ca you will be blind. I, I have today written an article in Monday, and I said, you see, you can quarrel with Anita Mong, like Kofono Pono is doing these days. I think he doesn't do any other work. <laughs> On all the platforms, the first thing he does to put there, uh, all the social media leakages is the one who is alerting me. Have you read this one? Have you read this <laughs> one? That's, that's the only job he's doing now. <laughs> so you can quarrel with Anita Mong. Was the situation better when you had Kadaga there? She was running an 8 billion social, res social corporate responsibility fund, personally. Mm. At one time she had even said, uh, I, I now want a helicopter. It had been put in the budget. So we've, we, we are where we are because Mr. M7 wants to be in the power uh, at Ghana point. So political parties, like any other institutions, as Muslims every day we are quarreling. Mm. After we are stealing our money, I remember the statement the owner of media Matembe made in Chiangkwanzi in 2003 when they had their movement conference. If she doesn't remember, I can remind her now. She said, uh, when I am chasing corrupt people, they run it to you. And she gave the example at that time of the chairman of uh, Rakai. So the people she was chasing, and, and I want to thank her, not many people will say that before Museven, that everybody I, I am chasing for stealing money runs to you and you are the one defending them. And eventually he became a member of parliament. You remember that cow man? Yeah, but at least you, you spoke and told him that I chase people who are suspected of corruption, they run to you, you are the defender. So a friend of Pondo who works with Museven, on a show where they are going to, dis to, to discuss corruption, you should even stay away and, and then ask what are they saying. But to come here and pretend that you're also fighting corruption, this is where we are now, that the final point is speaking about corruption. So political parties have systematically, the religious leaders have been systematically, traditional institutions have been systematically decimated to benefit one person who must conquer Uganda, uh, how conquer powerful, all, how civil powerful, society. How powerful is that? single individual L look at that, that, that in the population of 45 million people for now 38 all, years all no one no one can stand all, all, all up the, all dictators you, <coughs> why didn't you ask the same questions about Gaddafi for 43 years he had mm. subdued everybody Bashir until the population was able to rise up mm. Mubarak for 38 years dictators go back to history from Congo to Marawi to, to Zambia wherever they have existed they have ex they exhibit the same conduct in the parliament where we are now, I don't want to, it is not Anita Mongo who has captured the parliament. In fact, it is Museven who has captured the parliament. 
And it among is just an agent of Museve. When at, at what stage do, for example, political parties, individual institutions, take responsibility for their own failures? As individuals, yes. Mm. I am, and I'm, I don't want to say we are fortress. We are also weak. When it comes to parliament, you need to understand how parliament works. All of us who are members of parliament, from the day you are sworn in as an MP, you are actually you are being sworn in to take on the public. Because the first thing that they do immediately reach parliament is provision of money to go and buy a vehicle. Mm. So for the next two weeks, you have a debate with the public. They have no ambulances. They have no this. And for you, Guride, you are taking money to buy a car, mm. 200 million shilling. And we never see you disagreeing. Exactly. Mm. That's the point. All of you that's agree point. on that point. I brought a motion in parliament, and I said we should go for a zero fleet. Because me, I don't want to be discussing symptoms. Because Ofono Pondo has a vehicle here. Even when he goes for private work, he goes with it. My proposal to Parliament, which uh, the Minister of Public Service captured and Tunga and never returned, was that we go for a zero free. You don't provide a vehicle to, except to the President and, and the Speaker and Chief Justice, maybe about five, ten people. Mm. The NRM people fought me. In fact, at that day, I was a campaign against me. So the ritual that we do, we, we go through hell to do the ritual that we do there. Mm. That parliament, there was a campaign against me for proposing that MP shouldn't get vehicles. I have said, and I want to repeat here, the, because there are two things that NRM now uh, work so hard to achieve. First, they want to make everybody look like them. Because if you begin to look like them, you have no more authority to, to say they should get out of power. So they will work day and night to make sure they corrupt everybody. Even if they don't, at least they will choose you. Mm. Because at least in, in before the public, you must look like the same. You, you, I mean, you are talking about seven new MPs. You just increased your salary. You've given yourself a vehicle. You are giving yourself this. And Ofono Pon is very good at that. So once everybody has started looking like him seven, that's why Odongo Toy is saying, maybe we, 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 we go back to individual merit. No, no, no. Mm. He said we can't go to court. We can't go to IGG. We can't go to God. I don't know where Ofono, I mean, uh, Odongo Toy wants to he go. He said he wants to run it to has London. Been, it, 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 eh? it has been a campaign that has brought us where we are. He wants to kill, run to turn down kill, the street. Kill civil society, kill religious institutions, kill uh, traditional institutions, kill parliament, kill judiciary, political, and one, parties. political parties. And once that has been achieved, now you can install your son when you are tired. That's where we are as a country. Dr. Matembe, let me come to you. You, you. you did pose a question to the panel here, just as we're beginning. You said, do we even have political parties? What did you mean? You see, you, you are asking where, what, now that there is confusion in the parties, now where are we going, what to, for me, when I say we don't have, I should say, credible, effective parties that are capable of running a country as expected of liberal democracy, as you are saying. You people, you talk of, of NRIM as a party. I don't see it as a party. This is a team under one person like this. We are now in a military dictatorship where the, the media want us to come and talk, and I've been refusing to come, but people insist. Mm. Because for me, many, many times I really, I, I cry for Uganda because when President Museven came here, me when I embraced the movement, the other one where we worked, I, I had this energy, I had this hope, I, had, I have explained this matter here on this program, that now that these people have come, the educated people, the people who, who were human, that they are here, me when I embraced, I knew never again are we going back to where we had come from. Mm. Because I had experienced the... Uh, I mean, I had experienced Obote too. I had experienced this, the Mwanga's government and how we suffered. And I said never again. And I said, by the way, mm. 
this business of, of, of criticizing and staying here, eh? now that these young people now have come in, wh what have I done? I must go in there and also play a part to deliver this nation and move it forward. So that is the, the, the enthusiasm, the energy, the everything. And my frustration mm -hmm. was when president decided to remove the term limit. Because the hope of changing, at least building and beginning to, to move in Africa without the term limit, without presidential term limit, it could not be there and it hasn't been there. The peaceful changeover, handover of government from one individual to another. And by that time, I reached that frustration. I had seen President Museven, who came here, we all admired, we all embraced, and she was speaking. He, all the problems of Africa and mm. Uganda, he had identified them. So I said, ah, yeah, this person who can identify these problems, as we know, and he's ready to fight them, well, this is the right person. And down the road, down the road, mm. the fellow, I think, me, I want to conclude that as he went to the bush, for him, he knew what he wanted. I can tell you, President Museven knows what he wants within 50 years to come. Mm. So for him, he knew what he wanted. And he, he, for us, we didn't know. We thought he was coming to deliver Uganda, and we, we move forward and we progress. But for him, he had his internal. How, how, how did he succeed in blinding all of you? He didn't blind people, let mm. me tell you. You are also blinded, weren't you there, if it is blinding. <laughs> if somebody comes eh, mm. and he's saying what you want, like me when I read the 10 point program, I said, oh, wonderful. Because I saw it as all along, this is what I would have wanted. And therefore, what did I do first thing? Read 10 point program, believed in it, resolved to practice it and resolved to go around and mobilize all Ugandans to embrace the 10 point program because it was going to lead us to where we would go. This is, and, and, and bearing in mind where we were coming from, it was like we have got a savior coming down from the ditch. The good thing is for me, if I, ha I had been de deceived, you said how did we get deceived what? Mm. You get blinded. If I had been blinded, at least I was blinded for a, for a distance. I started seeing, seeing, seeing things not becoming what I had expected. And that's when I stood up and said, uh -uh, mm. now, this, this one now, it should not be done. So we're talking about 2003, when you see the light and say, this is not where we're going. I had this, don't mm. think we had not, have you read my book? Yes, I the have. struggle for freedom and democracy betrayed. Mm. It just didn't happen just like that. Mm. We were seeing, we were talking, we go there and discuss and talk. For instance, I was minister for ethics and integrity. Hasn't he tell, told you that I told that man on that day? Everything, I told him even, you deceived us, you said this and this, and now this and this, and all this happening like this and this, and this is that, and now for you, you can't continue. You, if you continue, we are going back in reverse. Mm. And he said, get out of here. And I got out of there. That was 21 years ago. Yes. Mm. And I, 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 I'm glad that I saw. And when w I was so, like you are asking, how were you blinded? Everybody who departed from seven, because every, along the past, many people were departing. Whenever they departed with him, they would be so angry, so angry. Mm. And I was saying, but why are these people so angry? So when I told him no time limit, and you know, he said, I, and we parted company. We had a long chat discussion, sometime there in, 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 at home, mm. until I told him, you know, you and I cannot move together anymore. 
And by the time he, he reshuffled his cabinet, you had said, you and I, we, we cannot, cannot move together. Mm. But then I, 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 I started getting angry. Do you know why I got angry? Mm -hmm. I said, how on earth can I be made into a fool? How can I be deceived and be made like a fool? That's what angered me. But the, down the road, I said, no, mm. I'm not going to be so angry because for me, I gained. Because I had lived with a childhood dream, longing to get a platform where I would fight for gender equality and women's empowerment. It's Women's Day tomorrow. And so. I got mm. that platform. I even thank him. Me, I always say, and he knows, I say where well, we can depart on all things. But the fact that he brought an environment and said, women, where are you? And I rose up by that time we parted company. What had the entire achieved in terms of gender equality let me and take women's a, empowerment? Let me take a few messages and, and then a break. Jose Nwavin is watching us and says, uh, my question is, for how long will the struggle against this monster and grotesque uh, called corruption be reduced to mere contradiction? To me, what you're calling contradiction is a struggle between those that are against corruption and those that are, are for corruption. Specifically on the issue of Chagula Nyimpuga, I want to pay tribute to Bobby Wine for his courage, determination, and boldness against this grotesque called corruption. There is no way any sane and well-meaning Ugandan who is tired of corruption can condemn Bobby Wine for condemning Nyimpuga for, for the sure. latter step. That's true. This is the boldness and courage we have been lacking in the country. What Impuga and his group did was glaringly illegal, irregular, and has no basis in law. And Impuga, being a lawyer, should be aware of this, but he chooses to, pay, to play victim. You can have your bias against Chagulani for some reasons, but he's right on this. Uh, that's. Uh, uh, I, Sammy I is entirely agree with that man who Sammy has Sammy is that. watching us from Fort Port and says, I agree with Semuju. We no longer have independent institutions. We have stars who are running the, same, the football team. No team cohesion. One star is bigger than a football team. That's Museveni. All political parties are driven stars. No ideology, only individuals running the show. Sami in Fort Porto. I have another message here I'll take before we take a break. Um, yes, let me take uh, from uh, Robert Buango Ruakaseni, who says, uh, watching from Fort Porto City, looking at our usual old opposition parties that used to be called the government in waiting, including UPC of the late Milton Obote, the DP of the late Kawanga Semogere, PPP of Bidandi Sali, their leaders were focused on regime change. But the current leaders of various opposition parties, including FDC, NUP, current UPC party, their leaders are practicing hypocrisy, greed, money-minded, self-centered, and many are just comedians. So to me, it will be very difficult for any opposition party to remove Museveni in the ballot box. May they wait for Mohozi in 2031. Uh, that's Robert Buango Ruakaseni. I have another message from uh, James Alemi, an ardent follower. He says, for the first time in three weeks, we have a gender-balanced panel. Can O.O. tell us the last time he attended church? Uh, you were resolving issues in church. When was the last time you attended church? Uh, Alemi wants to know. Um, another viewer here, Chakula Gamaiko, uh, says, 11th Parliament is so corrupt, much of taxpayers' money is being wasted on useless people. Uh, I wish that money was given to our school-going sisters in Kamuli to buy sanitary pads since Mr. M7 failed to fulfill his promises. Let the Ofono Pondos remind his boss, uh, YKM7, of that promise. Uh, Chakula Gamaiko, I think in Kayunga somewhere. Um, let me take those for now. We'll uh, pick this up after a very short commercial break. Still watching the front line on NBS TV and we're discussing, we're looking at the turmoil within political parties and how that impacts their effectiveness as uh, governments in waiting, somebody put it that way, as governments in waiting, uh, how can they hold one internally, how can they hold each other accountable? Inter-party, can they hold other parties accountable? Can they actually coalesce on some meaningful thing? And uh, beyond that, can they hold government accountable? Um, uh, Emmanuel Nahamia says, uh, what is killing opposition political parties is greed for money. 
Museveni is here to stay because the opposition is so weak. Even the people will call opposition, we call opposition a north. The fact is there is no opposition in Uganda. Um, uh, Emmanuel is watching us from Makerere University. Um, Dr. Jude Kagoro is watching us from uh, Bremen City in Germany and says a simple question for Semuju. What is Semuju's stand on the speaker's grand misuse of public money? He is usually eloquent, but he seems not to be himself since the parliament expedition kicked off. Jude Kagoro, Dr. Jude Kagoro in Bremen City, uh, Germany. I have a message here from, uh, let me see, I have a message here from Enoch Fred Kahua says the parliament of Uganda needs to be dissolved and the president inclusive before this financial year ends and we're going to fresh elections. The corruption in Uganda makes you feel to go into exile. Today's leaders, today's <laughs> leaders have no, ma eh? have no mass at fellow Ugandans. They are eating Ugandans as if the world is ending tomorrow. Fred Enoch Kawa, who is uh, watching us from Tienjojo. I have another message. Uh, let me see. I uh, have another few other messages I'd like to pick before we take a break. I mean, before we come back to the discussion. Uh, Laban Mohawe says, politics is a game of adding on. So Museven is right to disorganize you and add you on. Ndugunganda from Laban Kitagata Shema. <laughs> <It's> silly. <laughs> so someone here says James Bond is watching us from Fort Worth. Says my humble request from my senior OO. Please tell us how can a government with all equipped institutions <coughs> fail to combat corruption? How would you convince Ugandan that it is not the government which is embracing corruption if it can't fight it? James Bond in Fort Porto. Uh, uh, Ruben uh, Ruben says. Uh, hmm? Who is this? Uh, Chaguranya is a dictator than Museveni. What criteria did he use to drive the party? I would like to request Honorable Matembe to read Noop's constitution and then enlighten the Ugandans as well. I have never dreamt that Chaguranya, uh, that's how he has written it, can become integrity person. For sure, doesn't understand what democracy is. Uh, uh, this is Kurvakanya. Somebody sent this message called Kurvakanya. Um, let me see. Uh, this is it. Dr. Matembe, I want to come back to you. I, I want to go back on um, your position in these political parties. Yes. I mean, some of them were formed <coughs> when you were here. You had seen the old ones. I, I, have, I have always come here, except that we want to debate it big. I have always told you that in this country, I even said it now, we don't have political parties. You, what you need to know is parties are made by people. Now, what we have in Uganda right now, which I have emphasized, which affects these political parties and, and all leaders in this country, mm. is that we have a leadership in whichever party they are, which is self-centered and power-oriented, rather than a leadership which is people-centered and service oriented. Mm. So when you have a leadership which is interested in getting the power to use it to serve the people, then that leadership is the one which is able to build those institutions mm. which it will use to realize its objective. Now currently in this country where we are, Beginning with President Museven, who wants to be a life president. Mm. And because he wants to be a life president, he makes sure that anybody who is to oppose his life presidency must be dealt with. Some of them, you know how they deal with them, and some of them disappear, and some of them are not here, and some. But the rest, the majority. He makes sure he will buy them, he will take them over. And, and the good thing about President Museveni, I don't know whether I, I should equate, equate him with, 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 with the word of God. The word of God says that God does not do something mm. without revealing it to his servants. Now, President Museveni reveals, in a way I don't know why, mm what he wants to do. 
you know one time when he was in in is it in in Tungam, after 11 elections in 2011 is it when he said now i'm going to finish all the opposition mm. said i'm going to finish them and he started finishing them finishing them the, I, I even went on tv and said what do you want do you want to kill people what do you want i questioned it now I think, is it the last elections when he was in, in Masindi Obahoima? Mm. Me, I always see him on my TV. He told us that for him, I've forgotten the words he used, but he was saying that for him, don't joke with me. I don't go wah, 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 wah. And that's what he was saying. Mm. Me, I go quietly. Eh, I'm my, very, my, my, my uh, Linda, is, call, uh -huh. I finish this, then you ask me. Because this was him saying, I'm very, tactful, I work on the ground, I don't do like yeah, yeah, like them, and, and I will finish them like you finish a sumbusa. Don't you remember when he said it? Mm -hmm. I was listening to him, but the words <laughs> he used I have forgotten. But he was saying that for him, I'm very tactful, I'm very clever, I don't joke with me, I don't go wah, 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 like those who shout, and down the road, I will just eat them like sumbusa mm. and finish them. He said that, and after saying that now, show me, when it came to, 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 to what? FDC, buying them. And I told you that our leaders are, are self-centered and power-oriented. So they are ready also to be bold, so they were bold. Now come to this Mpuga. I don't know Ugandans. I think like this young man who said Chagurang should not say anything. Mpuga, let me tell you, Mpuga, I, I was respecting Mpuga. These people of Unup were suspecting, suspecting, saying this Mpuga is going behind our backs, is doing something relating, is connecting with the government. And you know, I talked to these young people. I was telling them, no, you people, you need to mature. Opposition does not mean fighting in your country. It opposition leaders can work with the government mm. for the sake of Uganda. If there is a conflict, they can talk together. The leader of opposition can talk to the government and they see how they sort it out. I was urging and trying to counsel them. They said, but for you, Maria, you know, you trust too much. Mm. I said, but this man is doing a good job. Now, when they removed him, when they asked me, I even talked, I said, well, he was doing well. Now that they've removed him, I would ask him to, to nurture and help his, his successor, his successor mm. to make sure that their party moves forward. Now down the road, Mpuga getting 500 millions as a as casino, mm. a reward, mm. I want to ask. This was a leader of opposition who has been opposing government. For the two years, is it two years? Two and a half years. Now, me, Miriam Matembe, I opposed the removal of term limit. Opposed it once even, mm. not many times. I opposed it once, they threw me out into the garbage. Let me tell you, I never even, they never even call, made a cup of tea to say, honorable, goodbye, you have done some mm. work of integrity. No, for mm. me, I just, no nothing, no. No, no pension, no, what do you call it? Mm, gratuity. Gratuity, no, mm, nothing, not, not even a cup of tea, mm. because I opposed the, the term, limit. term limit. But Mpuga was in opposition. W would you have taken it? Linda Ko, opposing everything for two years and plus, and when he leaves the opposition seat, the reward of 500,000, what does this mean? I want to ask, did Win Chisa get a reward? Did Latigo get a reward? This is pure corruption. This is pure buying. And I was so disappointed when I hear some people in Masaka saying, our man, I, you know, what kind of, instead of what, saying, what, no, Mpuga, they, this they is corruption. Been asking, and they, they, they have been destroyed asking. the party you, you, now. You've seen the benefits that have been uh, given to uh, former president, if we have any, mm. vice president, where they leave office. Um, the Prime Minister, there is a, law. there is a whole law on uh, judicial officers, the Chief Justice, 
Deputy Chief Justice and Justice of, uh, uh, of, of, of the High Court yeah? and on the, uh, the Courts of Judicature. Yes. The, there are benefits that come to them. And the question was, why not consider also the leader of opposition on this lineup of people who but have... Me too. You, uh, you were charity. You see, one of the commentators there said, mm. some of us feel like running into exile. Mm. I had just discussed with him. Mr. Nganda, I told him, you know, I'm really thinking of I should leave this country. Mm. Why? Because I'm traumatized emotionally. I, I want to die. Because when I see people, instead of saying, please, corruption is too much, let me tell you, I, I had had a statement on radio mm. that the government office employees are not going to get their salaries in time because government has no money. The government is broke. I had just had it. And then you tell me the, the reward to, to Mpuga. And Mpuga is supposed to be in opposition. And when you are opposition, you are checking government, you are checking corruption, you don't mm. want it. And you go on a committee and you say, pass conflict of interest. How can one, no integrity. Let me tell you, these leaders in Uganda, it is not parties. It is not a, these parties. It is the leaders who want to stay in power, who are greedy for money, who are greedy to stay in power, those the, from all leaders out there. Because I'm saying all leaders out there. Mm. Because even in NRIM, whatever, who, if they say they are not stealing or what, why don't they talk? Okay. What they enjoy, they are all hopeless. Let they me take have a message. destroyed our nation, and our nation is in the hands of God now. Okay. Um, Ken Mutenyo is watching us and says, the panelists are reading the book of Lamentations, and yet we, are all, we all know what has been happening. Let them propose solutions. On the Noop saga, it's not about the 500 million. It's about who is in charge of the Noop. The lesson is for politicians not to join what they don't understand. Mpuga would still have been targeted, even, if, even for only smiling after he emerged. Having a Noop, having a party leader out of parliament is the cause also. Thirdly, we have a group of politicians who will only be in the party if they are in charge. If not, they will try to destabilize it. By the way, Mpuga has not even got the money yet. Has he received the money or not? He says, he, he said on CBS that he hasn't received the money. He was expecting. But is I, he, is he hmm. right I to get know, it? Uh, where I disagree with the Honorable Matembe. On uh, corruption, on uh, what? No, 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 no. I am a member of parliament opposition. I earn a salary, I earn allowances. By your own conclusion, it means that either the opposition must not be paid. Hmm? Because, oh, sorry, opposition. no, no, no. Payment, the rightful uh, payment and allowance and what, is not what we are questioning. Yes. We are questioning the mm. issue of being both all of you. No, you are depending, the speaker <laughs> says, I, I will give you this money, I will give you, to, I will, you know. I you agree are. the issues of, but, but issues of uh, facilitating <coughs> opposition to do work are issues of the Constitution. I have a problem with the way the, the, the reward was, was arrived at. In fact, if they sought to amend the Administration of Parliament Act and give a retirement package like they have given to the Prime Minister, like they have given to all government officials, I would never have had a problem with it. But I cannot come here and say that the opposition, because you're opposing government, mm. for you, you should retire with no benefits. Yeah, on because the opposition side of government. Yes, I, 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 ha I have, I have gratuity. Mm. I also have pension, but I still oppose this government. I only have a problem with the way this was done. But I don't think that the, the Parliamentary Commission or any other institution, in fact, in Parliament, when they brought the Administration of, of, of Judiciary mm. Act, I am the one who proposed that the Chief Justice should retire with his salary. I had traveled and seen a Chief Justice at a bench in Dubai, and it was embarrassing. They said, no, 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 I mean, these guys are retiring at 70. Give them a, a decent retirement. So I don't have a problem with the opposition in retiring with benefits. Okay. I have a problem. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with the way with this the way particular was one was a done. One. You, yes. You've offered, uh, th th this has now <coughs> spilled into and split the threatening split national inter-platform. Yeah. I have read that you have offered to mediate. 
between the Mpoga and Chagulanyi? No, no, I have not offered, but mm. uh, because you see, we are in this together. But the party is already... I don't but, benefit but, from... But even, <coughs> be, sorry, before you go to mediation, mm. I still also want to disagree with Maria Matebe, because everyone finds it convenient to talk about Mpuga. What about Anita? Mpuga's two and a half years greeting, handshake. Is Anita's one man's salary? Why do you fear her? Everyone is speaking with tongues. No, this is one month entitlement. Someone is earning it in one month. <laughs> so why are you talking about the tree? Why don't we talk about the forest? But, 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 but we need to be held. Let, let, let me ask. Let, yes. me, let, me, let me ask you, uh, Odonga Oto. You don't see how you disagree. Can you rationalize something wrong because other people are also doing it? <coughs> no, what I'm trying to say, let's yes. not say Mpuga. Let's say Mpuga, Anita, Taewa, and all the four NRM commissioners. Because everyone is now using Mpuga as a punching bag. Mpuga did not buy a Benz of 800 million. You know who bought a Benz of 800 million. You know who bought another second but Benz of, of 600 the million. These are taxpayers' being... money. It pains. It pains people. You, 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 sat, you sat in that parliament. You sat in that parliament for how many times? Four? Yes, four times. It didn't pain you then? No, it didn't. Why it does it pain you now? It was not working like this. No, no. this so is, how was it working? This is a totally, this is a yes. totally different... Mm -hmm. This is... This is I, I wish I could take the next flight to Europe. And I told one of the speakers mm. that if you come to Europe, you'll be arrested. Mm. This is thuggery. Yes. But this it, is it, robbing, it, looting of taxpayers' money. Lutocracy. Honorable yes. isn't that a big contradiction that you think the only solution to Uganda's problem is youth jumping onto a flight and running to Europe? Because what can you do to these people? The what IDG, they have removed yeah. the tooth. But the Auditor Charles. General reports to Parliament. O -O the President is preoccupied in winning the next election. Oh, wants to try something. Yes, or? I know you have attempted to mute us, but... Uh, no, I haven't. No, uh, by the way you are setting questions. Mm -hmm. First of all, if you look at what has, what has been exposed so far, do you want to believe wholly in the words of the accusers who said they haven't got money? Do you want to believe it yet? You have not done any due diligence to the accusations, to the things being said. For the record, it is now emerging that the meeting that awarded service award was, I think, a week after what buried the Jacob Bolani. Chaired by the speaker. Mm -hmm. The first meeting of the commission, which gave the service award to the commissioners was a week, I think, 25th April, after we had buried Olani, Jacob Bolani, or thereabout. Yeah. This was less than a year. Puga had not yet completed one year as law. So why, what, why was he being given a service award? For having spent less than a year on the job? If he had completed like he has now completed and has done well, Logically, you would, you would expect, yes, we have now seen you completed your term, you have delivered. Secondly, at the time, Lop was Lop and the commissioners were being, but I want to focus on Lop because his job is to yes. hold the government, to check the government, to hold it accountable. You remember at that time was when his two members of parliament, Segrinya and Alan Sewanyana, when my, when Masaka prison, we're in prison here, Kitali. Mm -hmm. Is that what he was being thanked for, rewarded for, when his members are in the prison? Three. Is he the one you remember? Who took, you remember? No, no, no. You made the point and I kept but quiet. But who chaired the commission no, yes. meeting? Uh, that same commission, same commission yeah, meeting. Two. You made the point and I listened to you. That's I'm just asking you. No, no, wait. So is he the one who took the second and I know you're a beneficiary and you don't want us to go there. But that was also the time. I you remember of Parliament of of when Nob when Nob was making all the noise that their activists were being rounded up by the government. So was Mpuga receiving this good service award because of that? I am simply posing questions so that the people out there know. No, but who chair the no, meeting? I, I, I'm who chair the no, meeting? Who gave I, I the, am, but the but a parliamentary, the speaker. a parliamentary commission is chaired by the speaker. Precisely. In the absence of the speaker, it is the deputy. And it has yeah. so, it has yes. so, they are all things. So, I'm simply, and this matter 
was in 2022. So, we, and we need to hold Mpuga because he, he could be telling lies that he has not got the money. The information I have mm. is that when they made this award, parliament, government at that time did not have ready cash. They actually went to the parliamentary commission and borrowed from the parliamentary actually, commission. Actually, the speaker wrote a letter yes. authorizing the yes. parliamentary circle, the circle to give the, the money in circle. advance. They, they borrowed from the, the yeah. So it's a joint thought visa. Yeah, yeah. So it is not true when they are not telling the truth that he did not. He is not telling the truth that he, he, did not, he has not got the money, and that's why mm. the other commissioners have decided to keep quiet. You have not had a foyer chan. The ones from the NRM. Mm. The, the one from FDC, you have not heard them saying we, we did not get what we got. They have chosen to take the path of silence in the hope that it is a better way to keep their peace. But now, now, but now, let, let's mm -hmm. go there. Now, the issues at hand today is that, yes, Uganda has a little money, but somehow parliament has a lot of money, which is being spent in a way that is not, that is not in line with accounting proce procedures yes. of government. Precisely. Is it normal that staff of parliament receive money hourly and obscene sums in the name of one person? And then we can challenge and say, OK, if you receive the money for outreach in the Tororo, this thing has been going on for 10 days. Can you give us what that outreach, which date it was, in which part of Tororo? If it was in Bukeda, can you come out and tell us we were in this primary school, we are roofing, or we have bought bricks, we are at a ring beam? If it is in Gulu, can you give us when this workshop for local councillors was held? These are basic things that we are asking for. Mm. If you say, and, and no, 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 if, 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 if as the delegation is saying, yes. th that somebody, you, got, you don't, got, got, you for don't example, somebody, got, no, somebody, somebody got money. Yes. Listen, somebody got money yes. for th four days or 30 days in Nairobi, but simultaneously also got money for, for being in South Sudan, in Juba, for example. Can one person be in two places at the same time? These are the things which, these are common things that we need to clean up. Yes. Mm. Nobody is against the leadership of parliament. But, what, what, but we are questioning. What, what yes. happened? Yes. What happened? So the entire government machinery, which has investigative arms, you have multiple agencies against corruption to check this. But they are corrupt. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I'm asking no, no, no. Pondo. The institutions no, no, no. are corrupt. Yes, yes I'm asking no, Pondo. No. What happened? You are the, you are the journalist. Now mm -hmm. you have abdicated. Is it normal, for example, that all what calls itself the mainstream media in Uganda, this TV, NBS, uh, NBS NTV, UBC, New Vision, Monta, name all of them, mm. you have close to 100 journalists in the parliament. Is it normal? Can't we put question mark? How come Has that none IDG of... No, no, listen, ask, listen, ask, listen. Ask, How come ask. that none of them are... No, 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 not, not being the, defensive. The, 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 this is the IGG, IGG, Auditor General, I, I internal... I, don't, don't, no, hold no, hold no, no, don't, no, don't, no, don't, no, don't, no, don't, 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 you're now, you're not trying to be like Honorable Semu who says, who says, because, Museven, because Muse President Museven has emasculated everybody, therefore, it is the, it, it, the don't, please don't ask us, as members of parliament, as members of the opposition, why we are not talking about these issues. Yes, at one time, Africa, the whole of Africa and Uganda was under colonial rule, which was very, very draconian. Mm. But our forefathers ch chose to fight it and remove it. And therefore, we should not use escapism to explain away and, and, defeat and is it, it, appear, it appears to we me, should, we, we should with due respect to Fonopon, yes. it appears to me you are applying the very same thing, escapism. No, that I'm government not. agencies that profligacy... You see, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm done, I'm done yes. forcing you to this place. You as a moderator, you are scattered around. You profligacy you scattered in government, around. corruption in government is not a new subject. Now it arrives in parliament and now it's a, a special thing to be discussed. Why hasn't, haven't we discussed it the same way in the same terms over all other government agencies. Well, I'm sure we have up. had I'm sure we have had discussion mm. on the different issues of And what have we done about uh, it? No, we have had discussion about different instances of corruption in this country. Yes. 
I am taking you on, on this particular one. Yes, if you and want I'm to asking discuss, you. If you want to discuss everything, you can discuss And everything. I'm asking you, but how I'm did we arrive? You, I'm telling you, how why, did we why, why, have you, why have you been scattering around no. on this particular how, one? How did we arrive where we have arrived? Because no, you're dealing we, with we the symptoms. We have arrived, no. Mr. Mr. We have, yes. we have yeah. arrived where yes. we have arrived let, let, let because we have leadership mm. at many levels of government and the country that are serving self-interest. Okay, Charles, the big yes, Mr. Mr. Discuss, I think it was uh, Honorable Dunga who mentioned it earlier, that what institutions can check parliament. Because uh, I, our, our laws envisage that every institution is accountable, as long as you're using any public funds. I don't think in creating the Administration of Parliament Act, which were, by the way was not uh, in the first parliament after the 1995 constitution, parliament was not self-administering in terms of uh, finances. The intention was to give it some independence, but it wasn't meant to put it to create a, a, a supreme authority which is not self account which is not self, self accountable if you look at the igg remember there was a time when uh, honorable kadaga and justice muria gonja was igg then had a clash and when when the igg tried to put a parliament to order i think honorable don't even that parliament honorable kadaga said this one is even our officer auditor general reports to parliament and as we have seen the speaker has a discretion to choose which reports to be discussed which will be referred, which will be. So at the end of the day, you are creating a, an authority which is seemingly self accountable. When it goes to this, this impugned uh, finances, I've had several explanations. Mm. And even the explanations, by the way, do not add up. The statement itself by Honorable Mpoga uh, talked about, didn't justify, give the justification for the 500 million. It instead, just like Honorable Samuji tried to do, said, you know, Parliament, they give gratuity, they give honorarium. But all those other benefits are structured, and they are known already. And if the discussion was meant to discuss, to, to, to agree to terminal benefits for a lead of opposition, like a senior legislator came to NBS here this week and mentioned, you know, lead of opposition is the only office which is not, it doesn't get terminal it's benefits. Then you amend the law. Then what explains commissioners getting, if you're discussing lead of opposition, what explains uh, having it tied to a, to a person holder? What explains the service award one year into the term? Mm. So all those are the questions that NUP raised. And some of the problems that we've faced that we've fallen into the biases, that the what aboutism, that why are you asking, even you are dirty. Because it's not, a, it's not a, a secret in this town that there are some underhand deals that take place in parliament. You remember the, 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 the one where Se Honorable Sechikubo blew the lead at Mosakot. Money was being exchanged to, 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 to amend mm. the constitution. Mm. There was the 40 million in this current parliament, which also the, one of the members even dragged it to the, to the house, saying that I received this one. The explanations were as varied as we're having now. Some were calling it gratuity, yet it wasn't. So, you, you, Honorable Donga, my, my, uh, mm. Honorable uh, Mr. Masese, mm. my question would be mm. why we discuss this in isolation? Mm. You're going back to an incident in 2005? Yes. 2005 that. Uh, um, uh, I mentioned 2005, and, and I yes. mentioned you, even you, the, you the mentioned 40 the million of, uh, in the yes, parliament. Yes, was Dr. Kagabo, or somebody yes. who came yeah. back with money mm -hmm. in the parliament. You remember there was money that was distributed, multi I, I mean, various monies that have been distributed over, over a period of time. Yes. So if you're discussing the question of corruption, mm. abuse of public funds, mm. where do you begin from? You begin from where you are. Yeah. You begin from where you are. That is why I'm saying that we've had multiple explanations, mm. and it's, been, it's being shrouded in politics by someone saying, why is that one asking? Mm -hmm. Why is that one not getting? We've not had an ex got an explanation, because like uh, I think Oizono o o mentioned, that the setup of the parliamentary commission is to be fully representative. That's why we have a minister of finance, that's why we have a leader of government business, and that's why we have a leader of opposition. The leader of opposition, some of the problems these people are having, they, 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 they are saying, the, this doesn't represent our values, because you're supposed to go there and represent the opposition, act as a check. Mm. We have on record the leader of opposition, I think the Honorable Winnie Kiza. They are renewing uh, General Kaihura's contract. She was, over, uh, she was outnumbered, but she went on record that she, I didn't vote for renewing. That's the purpose, to, to act as a check. She was also being accused of having pocketed uh, 40 million shillings. Yes, of, of course, of course the, the, she rebutted the accusations, and yes. uh, the last I, I heard, they are going to court. And which makes these accusations that have been running around, Charles and Honorable Dongo to are lawyers. You know that if someone makes a fact, it says something in your presence, and we don't refute it, it's presumed to be to, to, true. To be true. Mm. So we've had allegations, uh, and this is just uh, uh, all week being thrown around. We've not had an explanation 
not from uh, Mr. Ampoga's apologist, not from himself, not from Parliament, by the way, clarifying, justifying why this, why at this time, why tied to him, why other commissioners got. We've not got that clear expl explanation. How, how now, the problems, how, how how just a second, yes. let me make this point, Charles. The pro some of the problems uh, NUP is having is that we are also used to compromise. Mm. We're also used to compromise. That's why some of, the, some of people are saying, even you received this, why is this one asking? But we all know that you cannot run away from an accusation because the accuser is also dirty. Mm. How, how does the country move itself out of this? Yes, uh, Honorable Matembe. For me, I, I have repeatedly and repeatedly told you that the, the government of Uganda hmm, gets all the time gets into office through corruption. Corruption is the engine that drives it, that drives this country. I, you remember I was the first minister for ethics and integrity. Mm. And I played that role for four and a half years. And I used, some you say, said a little thing here. We used to, with IGG, eh, to message. We used to investigate and find these people who are thieves and make, you know, the big people, you make reports to the president and recommendations. Eh? And she would sit on, that, on those reports and he would not take action. And at one time, we even managed to, to secure, to prosecute, you know, and charge and convict. They were, there was a permanent secretary and another one was what? Officer in that veterinary thing. And then also, Virum Maso, there was a, a member of parliament by that name. Yeah. Virum yeah. Maso. Yeah. We, we finally put them in prison and we said, wow, we have caught the big fish. And I remember when the, the donors came and were on the committee and I told them we've got the big fish and, and we, I defended and then they increased our budget, our contribution to the budget. And the next day, I think it was two days, mm. president gave presidential pardon to, 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 both, to those <laughs> three thieves. <laughs> To, to those three thieves. Eh? <laughs> and and uh, President Museven, mm. as long as you want him to stay in power, you cannot be corrupt, and whether they catch you or not. But you, why are we wasting time? These, the Prime Minister and all these ministers who stole the iron sheets, I came here and I told you, wait, mm. you will tell me whether they will be put in prison or punished. I want the whole world to know now were they touched? Okay. They can't be touched okay. because they are chief mobilizer for votes, like, uh, like uh, Nabanja, Nabanj, Nabanj, mm -hmm. the prime minister. The way she mobilizes, you see seven losing her with her mobilizing capacity because she stole iron sheets? No. So the government of Museven, and Bambi, that's why I was saying that he was pocketed and blackmailed because he loved power so much. Mm. He loved power so much. He became, when they, I have forgotten the word, blackmailed, like they hijacked. Mm. He was hijacked. W was he? You, sa you, you said for him he can read where he wants to be 50 years from now. Him, how, how would such a person be hijacked? He, he, in terms of what he loves, eh? Because of what he loves, he's, he's hijacked by the sharks. Because th that's how it started. Because we who were straight, who didn't want corruption. You were edged out. Uh, uh, we didn't want corruption. Mm. And yet he wanted to stay in power forever. For us, we didn't want. But those who wanted him to stay in power, they, they now use the money. And they, they, he, they have, he's the one, they, he has to support them whether you want or not because they make him stay in power. In Rinyankore, mm. in my language, we have a proverb <coughs> that when a chokunda, chokunda mm. that when you love something so much, it makes you drop what, drop you, what you already have to pick the other one. Let me take a message Assuming from James Assuming that Ademi. president came with a desire to develop this nation and take it too far, when he desired staying in power forever, when he became greedy 
stay in power. He had to become greedy for resources because it is resources which make him stay in power. So he dropped the whole idea of developing Uganda. He, de he, he dropped that and he's running with his sustainability in power. I always admire Mama Miriam Matembe for speaking her mind whenever she's on TV. She has directly inspired young women like Honorable Liliana Bell to become politicians. However, she must understand that in Africa, revolutionary leaders either die in power, whether they are from CCM or ANC or NRM, or get pushed out. Then like Gaddafi, die. James Alemi, and Adin Fora. He says, oh, he's getting into emotional outburst, uh, emo uh, emotional outburst mode compared to his usual intelligent uh, discussion which, that I know. intelligent? He had already seen intelligent discussion there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is no... Uh, Benson, <laughs> Benson Gumisriza from Dambwe in Kamuli Kachiri says, I disagree with OO. How can you expect those questions from a senior six student? Most of our MPs are incompetent to be in parliament. Yes. <laughs> and, and he says there is no position in Uganda. Yes. Uh, let me take one more message and then uh, we will... Take a quick commercial break. Yes. Uh, Tembo Misai Kaugu from uh, Bukonzo, East in Kasese. I thank Honorable Semuj for always being clear to the point. However, I was expecting him to, as always, to raise a point of procedure and raise these issues of Parliament being at the center of the exhibition. I am worried that the House was adjourned, signed I, as a way of cooling the fire from public at a time when budget processes, the, the budget process is on. Finally, political parties should be careful with politicians who are always on the move. FDC, stay and sort your party. So should not. By the way, Charles, uh, yes. today I had a rumor. I can talk of a rumor also. Somebody mm. came and told me that they were going to give 50 million mm. to each member of parliament. That, Some, that received. Eh? Some received. Some received. It is true. Yes. You can imagine. Have evidence, huh? uh, is and it a rumor? Is it somebody who told me, received. by the way, was from State House. I love the truth, Honorable Matembe, eh, tells, I wish all Ugandans were open like her. Personally, I see President Museveni has a good vision for Uganda and Africa by the people he works with. Uh -huh. By finishing the opposition, President Museveni must have seen the weaknesses of many attacking uh, one technique. They forget that they are, they are not grounded like President Museveni, not NRM. Murungi, Patrick, I, your message is not very clear, but thank you very much. Let's take a break and uh, we'll pick this conversation up in a moment. Back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the front line on NBS TV. Hot on and off the air. And Honorable uh, Semuju, you, you, uh, you're quiet uh, throughout the last s segment. These things have come back to you in Parliament. Of course, when you are in Parliament, yes. and so much has been published go. about Parliament, mm. you have every reason to feel bad about it. Mm. You just feel bad about it? Uh, because you see, Every MP, and it doesn't matter who the speaker is, you are part of that institution. But let me make two points. And I have said that the public has a very reason to be angry about MPs and all of us. But we should also not lose the context under which this is happening. And I want to deal with both. Mm. I have told you I have never seen Ofono Pondo enthusiastic mm. as he is in this matter. And I hope really that his enthusiasm will now spread to everywhere. Because every leakage about the speaker, including, because me I got sleep early, except when I am here. Ofono Pono is calling me, that, have you seen this one? And, uh, and he's put on every WhatsApp group where I am with Ofono Pono. Mm. So that's why I said, uh, maybe there are other things that are happening. Maybe the speaker is about to be removed. I have never, I mean, we've said many things that are happening in this country, abuse of power by himself and by his family. And Ofono Pono is not uh, this enthusiastic to, to, to deal with it. But when it came to the speaker, maybe there is something between them. And I'm not saying what has happened in Parliament is okay. And uh, I have said, so let me repeat, I think there should be some introspection about what, what has happened in Parliament. In fact, my earlier proposal was that uh, allowances and uh, facilitation of Parliament 
may be in it, the one of the next parliament will need to be determined by this parliament. So that you deal with the issue of the conflict of interest. But otherwise, the way the constitution was made that MPs, you will sit and determine your own facilitation. It, it takes a lot of courage for people not to <coughs> misbehave. Mm. Because they have given you with both hands that you, you sit there and determine your own emoluments. I am not sure that the, the, the remuneration and, 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 and salaries board that people are proposing will be able to deal with it. Because in Kenya, when the MPs wanted to retire with big packages in, in a bill, Ruto refused to assent to it. I mean, uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta refused to assent to it. But here, the, the environment under which we work, Mr. M7 wants to uh, turn parliament into his them so that Yeah, but, but the bigger support. question is, uh, how can uh, all people at different points become so complacent? And I've seen discussion on social media platforms. People saying, why are Ugandans not able to create the link between, for example, what has been happening in Kampala, all these portals, mm. the absence of service delivery, mm. be it medical facilities, education, uh, road infrastructure, mm. uh, water, everything else, to create a link and say, look, if there is so much, it's actually beyond profligacy yeah. happening you in government the institutions. The and, 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 you, and you put it well. You said, uh, all the panelists here have said it not just in parliament, but across government. Why, uh, when do you create that link, and why are people complicit? But me, why I, is sorry, Charles, see the, the mm. I want to interrupt mm. you. Charles, I want you to be honest. You live in this country. Mm. You live in this country. When, because of military, because of resources that have become, made the president so powerful, and he's now, equal to Uganda, he's the Uganda, he has everything, he, and unless you, you agree with him, eh, you are done. Everybody is so scared. Mm -hmm. There is no, we wrote a constitution where we say that people should do demonstrate and that kind of thing. Civil societies were shut down in terms of, of resources because they stopped those who were funding them and in terms of you don't go out, you will see, you will see anybody who tries to, to, to demonstrate. The other day, I saw this, is it the policeman, what is he called? He was just fine that there was a small demonstration, I think about salaries, and the one man was killed and others were injured, and I saw him saying on the, t on the TV that you see, don't think you can just go out and demonstrate because you should write to police. Let me tell you. There was you a demonstration in Kagadi and uh, some, a demonstrator was, killed, was run over by a car. That's what I'm telling over, you. Uh, yes, when you, about bad Let roads. me tell you, when you write to police to ask for, even if it is a, a peaceful sit-down demonstration, you cannot get it. Yes, that but, is but, but someone now called, how do you want Uganda? Yes, someone called that to reading from the book of lamentations. Ah, uh -uh, shut yes. up! Those people who are talking. No, no, they are talking about. <laughs> Why don't they come out and talk so like what should we they are do? talking? What, let, what should they let do? Let me ask you. Here I am with yes. my courage, and I talk, and I go home. No security, no nothing, because I love this country, and I don't fear these people. Mm. I'm a special. I'm a different person. I fear God only. But many, many, many Ugandans, the majority of them, they fear, the fear has gripped them so yes, okay. much. Let, let's have some more So don't we, ask we, them <coughs> that why should they keep quiet. That's what they become. Yes. yes we, we've been walked to this point, Sirore. Yes. The members of parliament, um, I remember when we had a quarrel over the 20 million during COVID. The thinking was that, uh, and I remember Fono Fono teasing me, that those of us, because that time I had said, oh, no, this money will take. And he said, okay, we'll see. And you the talk? Majority of, the, of course, we are made to return it. Mm. Maj majority of, uh, of MPs, um, I think Dr. Vesge, who said, you buy your way into parliament. Yes. So the, the public that you want to demonstrate is also a beneficiary of what the MPs get from parliament. You just need to go and visit one MP and you see what will happen there. Mm -hmm. So Mr. M7 has slowly walked us uh, there, so the MPs will come to parliament. Uh, if, and if and, 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 and the whole, a whole, is, whole 45 million, a whole 45 million of us yes. have accepted to be headed there. They have bowed. They we have, have bowed. And uh, we are not thinking about how to get out because of that today, situation. 
Charles tell me frankly, mm. what, with the exception of a few constituencies, like maybe the one I represent, mm. what is the definition of good MP um, to many Ugandans? Mm. Is it one who speaks in parliament or one who is funding uh, social events? I don't know. I drove through your constituency today and the amount of potholes there is a special one. And I'm wondering how is why that related? No, so no, no. Why, why, wouldn't you, why wouldn't you mobilize your constituents to create that link between what is happening on the other side and what is happening in the terms of service they delivery? Do what? I, I see, people who come to my home, and mm. I've said this before, mm. most of the guests that I receive are not guests that are going to ask me about bills in parliament and my work in parliament. Mm. They, they are guests who are coming for school fees, there are guests who are coming, and for me, because I represent a constituency whose level of civic competence is, is fairly high, mm. but in other constituencies, it, it, it's, it's a problem. So the public that you want to demonstrate mm. is the same public. No, I'm, I'm, just wondering, I'm just wondering, how do we get out of this? Let me put yeah. it to... You are not uh, going to, to, to get to out so of no, no. How do you get out of this situation? Until yeah, Museven yeah. has gone, no, you're no, not no. going to get How does Museven go? You see, President Museven is going. It's just a matter of time. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so but let us... they let are ready to receive his son. This is Ugandan. Hold on. Mm. Because <laughs> it's easy to blame President Seven. But this <laughs> is our country. Yes. President Seven is just one individual. We have to think a way out of it. Now, in the last parliament, they brought... There was a scandal in Bank of Uganda where people went and printed government of Uganda money. Mm. And they brought extra bags. And they brought the money into Uganda. They beat the system. So when they wanted parliament to investigate, Rebecca Kadaga, in her own wisdom, said this matter is so big to be investigated by parliament. And she said it is better they use chieftains of military intelligence to investigate. Now, you go and look at the, you can Google now. What happened? Go and look at the report. Who are those implicated? Who are those implicated in bringing currents into the country? We don't know. These are the same actors. The Commission of Inquiry, uh, the president instituted a committee headed by Nachobe. Up to now, they cannot bring any report because these are the people with billions. But you said, you said you there is a look at the report. You yes. said there is a report. No, just oh, Google now. Report. Google now how far the BOU investigation is concerned. Yes. So no. how does it relate to no, this? No, why don't you share that with yes. our viewers? Because not everybody is going to go on Google. No, you, you have an audience. Yes. Yes. Is, is fearing what, to what did they say? No, I'm not fearing. Okay, <laughs> in the in the in the in the in the investigation, who was being investigated? The was brother was of the Speaker of Parliament. Was there? Who was in charge of currency at BOU? Was there? Ask an yourself. Yes, yes. I know what I'm talking about. Was there an investigation? So you've asked it. So let me now tell it. Yes. Ask yourself why fifty thousand shillings is more in circulation, more than any denomination, because the money entered in the country legally. So when you see some people with so much money. And no one can do anything. Semujo has not been unequivocal on parliament today. He's talking like his spirit has been removed. So the whole of that institution of parliament has been compromised. That is true. With money. And this is not small money. This is not small money. These are individuals who are as powerful. They almost have probably 15% of the GDP of Uganda. So what should be done? Mm -hmm. If President Museveni is a real general, this parliament should be dissolved. <laughs> it is serving no purpose. It is looting Ugandans. Does he need the purpose? Can you imagine, for the first time in 20 years, Maria Matemba was in parliament with you. Mm. Yes. Those days, Okule Park, Omara Tubo. Yes. We would borrow money, and we would, we would borrow money from the World Bank, IMF, and we have a grace period of four years before paying. Interest rate is at 3%. This parliament where Semuju sits, they borrowed one trillion shillings from a commercial bank at eight percent. So parliament borrows money or don't go to is that No, the they authorize government yeah. mm -hmm. to borrow. Mm -hmm. Why are you saying at eight percent and the repayment begins this very year? So we don't have a parliament. I can bet we, we don't, don't have a government. Did, did we have did we have a parliament when you sat there? I I, I Th there I, was a little bit of sanity. You know that I, I, I want to understand. Yeah. So don't go to one's parliament to zero. So you are comfortable with Museven? No, that's not so the issue want, because... You want to dissolve parliament and it stays. Oh, Yesterday, no, should go. this so parliament that, that's what here... No, what I'm saying, the category of MPs, close to 95%, are transactional leaders. Mm. They do a deal and they share the loot, the whole institution. That's it. 
At so, least for Semuju, I cannot mention so, so his name. Want, so, he's so he's fair and he's thorough in my eyes. So you want, you want because how do you, how do you explain this? A whole leader of opposition sitting in a meeting where they are approving releasing of money to them. Now I know why they, they don't want Zake in the, in the parliamentary commission. So because Zake would be like, like the president of Pyongyang of North Korea. So this problem of, of parliament the meeting was a few weeks is, ago. Is, is, yeah. I, 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 I want to understand. Uh, you see, I want to understand. We don't, we don't have a parliament. So you have a we problem with the parliament. You don't have a problem with the You don't have a problem with the government. So the, it's for you, the problem is summarized as parliament. No, listen. Parliament is the institution that gives money. Parliament is the institution that citizens of Uganda participates in, in, to, in, in to, 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 to represent people. Now, when parliament has turned into a monster, they have turned into dealers. My, my, my they have only, turned my, my into only transactional question, leaders. My only Why should we have that parliament? My, my only question for Odonga Oto is, yes. Musisi gave you an incident, 2005, parliament involved, more support apartment. There are incidents 2011, incidents throughout. Even the what? COVID cash, the 20 COVID million. cash. Yes, I was given. You, you are still in parliament. I, I refunded mine at Central yes. Bank. Yes, and, 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 and I'm wondering why you're focusing now, parliament should be dissolved now, you never called for its dissolution before. You see... And, and, and I've been asking the question, have we just arrived at this? Semuju says we walked. It has been this a No, no, no. no. Let, 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 Semuju, let, let me just conclude this. Yes. Yes. You remember when they gave us money, I don't remember for which uh, consultation. When we are returning for you, you say the people in Nigeria are poor. No, for me, I returned money you in Centenary Bank and I have the deposit slip yeah. in my file. Which money did you return? The 29 million. Yes. <laughs> but let me develop this point. <laughs> and for you, you said no. for us, we should give <laughs> now it to you and take it before. No. No, then Uganda who are poor. Do, don't mix facts. Yes. Now, my issue is the parliament is not meat. You have someone with, with leprosy selling meat to Ugandans. Mm -hmm. We have lepers at the head of that institution. They are flamboyant. They are in the showbiz industry. They have amassed millions of dollars in a very short period of time. Olanya well, Jacob built his house, that palace, for 10 years he did not finish. Mm -hmm. People have put up two, three mansions in a space of three years. Now, that parliament is not tidy. That's why I even don't want to go back there. Mm. It is not tidy. You see these days, Upondo Pondo. But if someone serves you food in a glass plate in a restaurant, we don't focus on the glass plate. We look at the feet. The appetite comes whether the, the person serving food is neat. So the whole parliament is dirty. The whole parliament is very messy. All the leaders, and, and, and whether leaders, the civil leaders servants are not being paid salary, the, mm -hmm. the teachers are suffering, people are, are, are in the streets, let, let me have people George. have nothing let, to let, do. Let me have George and the Useless and parliament. Oh, because and our time is running out. But why so do for you, you Museveni is okay, and the government, it is only a parliament that George, is useless. For Museveni, we have, we have failed to remove him. We are just waiting for... For, for natural forces to come on board, which is soon. Yeah. Let, let, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me have George. Let me have, uh, let me have George, and uh, oh, oh, I have only two minutes. <laughs> At the hearing of the, uh, the George, I have only two minutes. Mm. Mm. Petition I'm glad in I found my colleague here. Eh? Uh, against uh, challenging, oh, yeah. against uh, ta the last amendment of age limit. Remember, there was an opposition. The opposition had decided to refund mm. the, I think it was 10 million, which was 20. given for 20. 20. Yeah. And then there was an opposition member of parliament who was quizzed by Justice Kakuru because she brought a check. Mm. as a evidence that I refunded. And then the judge, the judge said, why don't you bring a statement to show that the money was deducted? But the bigger point that uh, we need to draw the dysfunctionality, it's wrong to think that we can have an oasis of peace or, or in, of a sea, in a sea of uh, broken institutions. Mm. Mm. Parliament is just part. All this dysfunctionality we see on roads, we see in hospitals, we see in schools. It all goes back to the governance and leadership issue that we're grappling with in the country. And someone was saying that we're reading from lamentations. No one has a divine duty to change. We start from where you are, each person, because at, at the end of the day, like we've seen, uh, sometimes even the leaders, uh, at some point, the struggle ends that, 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 that seat, getting that seat and maintaining it. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, you, you have the last word. Well, the people who are schooled in the Bible, I'm sure. Oh, oh, don't the Bible. Revelation <laughs> comes after lamentation. Mm. What? <laughs> revelation <laughs> comes after lamentation. The book of Revelation mm -hmm. comes after lamentation. So it is okay mm. to, lament. to lament. We shall and reach revelation. Mm. So you have, you have to yeah, as long as we stay focused. And that ties with your question why are we talking now? Maybe, like Semuji says, we had been seeing 
thinks small becomes a big, and now it is bigger, yeah. or getting biggest. Mm. So we are making a little more noise. I hope we can sustain making the noise, but also with the concrete actions. The, then the, the Honorable Semojo has tried to make it appear as if I have an issue with my sister and no, her no, mom. Uh, no, 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 you made yes. your point, yes. the person. First of all, let me say on record that Anita and I are friends. There's nothing personal to Fono and Anita. However, I raised these matters with Semuju in the last 10 days. Why? Because Semuju has been the one standing on the tables of parliament jumping. Mm. When these kind of things happen elsewhere in the state house, and, and so on, the corridors of the presidency. Semujo would be giving a point of order, point of procedure, jumping on the tables all the time in the parliament. And I keep teasing him. I sent to him mm. and our platform because I tease him and say, Semujo, now, there, have is a, no, no, now there is a trove. Today there is a trove which says that 675 million was sent on Santos' account. Have you seen it? I want, I'm, I'm so pro, want to I, I, I am pushing him. I mm -hmm. want to see Semuju jumping on, uh, on, the, on the table of parliament. Thank you. Because he has been as silent as a tombstone. Okay, thank you. And our time is okay. out. Someone, <laughs> someone is saying, <laughs> if you are here saying that uh, now finally Odonga Oto agrees, uh, he has been uh, defending Mpuga all over the place. Now he says it was a mistake to remove Zake. <laughs> so now finally you have agreed. Let him carry his cross. He was, he, Mpuga was lured into that trap. Now and that and trap another viewer here. Another viewer says, <laughs> this is in response to one contributor who has submitted that in Africa all revolutionary leaders die in power. President Sam Nuyoma retired voluntarily. President Mandela voluntarily left power after only one term. President Chisano of Mozambique respected the constitution and retired after two terms. Um, uh, even uh, President Julius Nyerere uh, left power. Those were great revolutionaries. President Museveni can take a leaf from those fellow revolutionaries. Uh, that's Solomon he Webala Rale. He made fake revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> Our time is out. We need to get out of here. Um, uh, President Museven went with very few people and changed people's thinking, and he's now in power. Why can't the many MPs, if they mean the change, mobilize and cause the change they wish? Uh, someone MPs. is asking that. No, he says Museven went and mobilized a few people and was able to cause change. Why can't someone else so lead so that so revolution? Are 529 and change? Heads. Why yes. doesn't he do it himself? Yeah. That one who is right. No, that, that one is not <laughs> complaining. He's, he's talking about those who are complaining. So what is he quiet? What, what is he he's doing? He's complaining. He, for him, he's not complaining. He yeah. says those who are complaining. Mm -hmm. uh, someone says, uh, Henry Ford, yeah, Henry Ford said, if money is your only hope for independence, you will never have, have it. Yeah. The only real security that man can have in this world is a reserve of knowledge, experience, and ability. Therefore, and Mpuga should not be seen idea. as a base of corruption because of that money when a lot is being swindled behind his back. Christine from Fort Porter. Um, I think these are the only messages I'm able to take this evening. Let me just take the last one from Harold Achema. Uh, he's in Arua. If Jacob Olanya, rest in peace, was speaker, parliament would never have degenerated into a den of thieves. Con men, con women, fraudsters, and shameless liars as appears to be happening. Nobody in his right mind should defend the indefensible. Parliament is accountable to the citizens of Uganda and taxpayers of Uganda. Uganda and Ugandans deserve a lot better. Harold Achema. Our time is out. We need to get out of here. Thank you very much to the panelists. Uh, Mr. George Musisi, Ofono Pondo, Odonga Oto. Say the tomorrow, final tomorrow, word. Tomorrow. No, uh, we have overshot our time, I'm, I'm afraid. Today, uh, the Honorable today Miriam is International Atembe. Women's Day. Eh? Today is International Women's Day. Yes. And we're having the national celebration in the Kataki district. Okay. International Women's Day. Yes. I don't know what we have to tell the women uh, who are gathering for the celebration. I said this, some newspapers did good uh, pullouts yes. to highlight uh, women who have made achievements. Who is the guest of honor? And the giving encouragement. Thank you very much. And uh, so we, yes, have, in we have, in we have uh, the, the, the only gentleman in the country. Who? Indeed, we you join, we, we join in the celebration <laughs> and uh, commemoration of International Women's Day, uh, which is happening, the national celebration or commemoration happening in Katakui District. We celebrate all the women of this country. And uh, on this show, we have to celebrate the Honorable Miriam Matembe, uh, who's guest on this. Uh, very should highly celebrated. It should be highly you celebrated. You know that of all the awards they give, with the, the, what are they called, medals uh -huh. or what? Yes. Do you know that the government of Uganda has never, has never given, given you an award? Nothing. And yet, at the forefront, Matembe is there running. We also celebrate.
the young men and women whose results for USCE were released today and uh, those who performed well. It's a particular young man called Calvin uh, who performed very well. Uh, congratulations to many uh, children all over the country. And lastly, what last but not least, uh, because I know him. Uh, that's a special thing. And last but not least, congratulations to Joe Walker for making the 300 kilometer walk uh, on for road safety from Kampala to Fort Worth. For me, it's a good morning.